U.S. and North Korean delegations are in Sweden for talks on Pyongyang's nuclear program. The delegations have arrived for the talks at a conference center in Stockholm. Negotiations are the first high-level working meeting since U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean leader Kim Jong-un met in June. Trump and Kim briefly met at the demilitarized zone between the two Koreas. They agreed to restart discussions that had been stalled following their failed summit in February. The summit failed due to differences on the scope of North Korea's nuclear program and the U.S. sanctions relief. Washington agreed to lift the sanctions in return for Pyongyang's denuclearization last year. Our correspondent Frank Smith joins us from Seoul to tell us about the latest developments and also we have Jason Anruha who's a political commentator and analyst to give us an analysis on this. Well Frank Smith from what I understand uh, the negotiating sides have arrived and I believe it's the same personnel. Uh, Stephen Began I believe is the uh, negotiator who has fruitlessly at this point uh, been the one that's going to be in presence here along with the North Korean side. What information do you have for us um, in terms of any new developments coming out of this? Well, the most recent developments are indications that the U.S. may be willing to compromise on a suspension of some of the United Nations Security Council sanctions against North Korea in exchange for North Korea shutting down its main nuclear reactor and nuclear weapons grade material bomb producing site at Yongbyon inside North Korea. Um, that is uh, quite a large undertaking for, for North Korea to pledge. There are uh, dozens of buildings. Uh, it's, a, it's quite a large complex there. And that is really the, the most recent thing. The U.S. had said previously that, that it would require complete denuclearization from North Korea before it would provide any incentives or any suspension of the U.N. Security Council sanctions. Now, this isn't an official position um, uh, proclaimed by the United States going into these talks. These are unknown sources close to the American administration that say that they will be willing to give up some of the sanctions, the UN Security Council sanctions. Also, uh, similar sources are suggesting that the, the United States will even go against the UN Security Council if the UN Security Council is not willing um, to lift those UN Security Council sanctions against North Korea as per some potential agreement uh, out of uh, the, these working level talks that, that have restarted after, again, months of delay. It was, uh, I think, in February that um, the Hanoi summit uh, took place. Okay, so Jason and Ruha, uh, if uh, it is true that the U.S. Um, may have compromised in their eyes uh, to lift some sanctions, um, what do you think we can expect from North Korea? And what are your views on these talks at this point? Well, I mean, that's kind of the point of a negotiation is that both sides have to compromise to some degree or another. Now, we've seen this very much back and forth by Donald Trump. Uh, wants to negotiate, doesn't want to negotiate, acts like he does, and then uh, doesn't follow through on it. Both of those uh, summits in which uh, the U.S. had ne previous negotiations with the DPRK didn't amount to anything. Nothing came out of them, despite the the great rhetoric that came out of uh, the, the first one, which seems like it was really just a photo op and not an actual real discussion. Now, the U.S. has been very firm in not having uh, any kind of flexibility in this situation, and uh, Trump shut down negotiations until the DPRK tested a missile that could be launched from a submarine. Now, this militarily is a major game changer. The difficulty for the DPRK was building uh, a missile that could reach f that could reach from the Korean Peninsula to the U.S. mainland as a deterrent against invasion. Now that they have something that can be launched from a submarine, this means they don't have to, they, they, they can just go into a, a much closer range before firing this. So in terms of uh, military tactics, this is a very significant leap forward that makes uh, the DPRK much more dangerous than it used to be in terms of its ability to defend itself. And I think this is really what has spurred the U.S. government to decide to suddenly come to the negotiation table right now. I believe it came, uh, the announcement came only a day after the DPRK tested this missile. So I think a very significant message was sent with this test 
that their missile technology is proceeding much more quickly than the u s had actually anticipated and with this new potential threat as a deterrent against invasion i think the u s suddenly wants to come to the table and make a serious discussion now i think that this is very typical of the way of the united states essentially as long as they're holding all the power they can do whatever it is that they that they want to do there doesn't have to be any exchange there doesn't have to be any negotiation they can just simply do whatever it is that they want as we see with the case of venezuela where they don't really have that kind of deterrent that the united states has and they're able to sow all kinds of internal turmoil inside the country but once someone has an ability to defend themselves once someone can stand up for themselves or at least create a massive deterrent against military invasion the united states suddenly wants to negotiate they suddenly want to talk they want to have uh, a, a dialogue with that country and that's that's very uh, that's, that's very typical the bully doesn't like it when someone stands up to them and i think that's a very clear lesson that we look this situation that you have to have a means to stand up to the united states uh, and its imperialist aggression or you will be continue to be run over by it uh, frank i'm curious if there was uh, any uh, reactions to that missile launch that came from a submarine that north korea conducted and what type of reactions uh, came from that well, of course, uh, South Korea looks upon this as a, a kind of a negative uh, deterrent to um, developing negotiations with North Korea. Uh, there are reports, though, that uh, North Korea actually launched that after they had agreed uh, to these summit meetings in Sweden. But I think uh, our guest, Mr. Unruh, is, is correct in suggesting that it's some of these other tests that, that have taken place over the past couple of months, about 11 uh, short-range missile tests that have taken place uh, by North Korea over the past couple of months that, that may have instilled some urgency um, in the U.S. administration. As well, you know, we could also put a little bit of uh, credit on uh, the troubles that Donald Trump is having at home. And he may be looking for a diplomatic victory uh, here to distract uh, perhaps the public and the media from his uh, troubles uh, regarding impeachment. Quickly, if you can, Jason, what if these talks collapse? If these talks collapse, I think things will just end up the, the same way that they are right now. Things will go back to uh, the, the U.S. saying that they're going to negotiate and they don't, and the DPRK continues to, to take these escalating measures by testing more weapons. I, I don't uh, predict that anything more significant will happen in that regard. Thank you for that, Jason Unruha, political commentator and analyst. Frank Smith, thank you. A correspondent there from Seoul. And that does it for our news review.